I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Wisconsin. I know Wisconsin because I once had a very good roommate who was from Oshkosh, and all I knew about Wisconsin was if the Packers win, everything's okay. Now I know more about Wisconsin. Packers' victories don't matter enough. What has to happen is someone's got to win in a recall race to make Wisconsin happy, but I'm not sure which way to go, which is why I need John Fund of the American Spectator, because a um, major cable channel is devoting a lot of airtime and money to something that isn't especially at the front of all the news, given the global route of stocks, the burning London, the story of governance throughout the Middle East, a recall election in Wisconsin seems obscure, but perhaps it's a celebration of democracy that we're this inside the weeds. Mr. Fund, a very good evening to you. This is Governor Walker and the uh, piece of legislation passed last winter that had many protests in Madison. And tonight is some of the payoff. Is that correct? This is an attempt to uh, engineer an informal referendum on Governor Walker's reforms of the public employee union system in Wisconsin. The unions have spent close to $40 million wow. in eight special election recalls. Six are happening tonight, two are happening next Tuesday. And the conservatives have spent uh, probably $20 million. This is an enormous expenditure of money. It's basically become a proxy for the 2012 election in a battleground state that Barack Obama must win, uh, and which he did win in uh, 2008. Isn't um, uh, Wisconsin's pretty blue, John, correct? There's no real reason to believe it could go red. It has been blue, but in November 2010, because of the Tea Party, it went very red. Right. It elected a Republican governor, Walker. It elected both houses of the legislature. And it oh. does have that rascal Paul Ryan. Right. And, mm -hmm. and he, by the way, became one of the major poster child right, right. Of, of targets for the unions and these recalls. You know, the recalls are fascinating. It's supposedly a referendum on Governor Walker, who passed this very controversial bill taking away the rights of unions to collect dues without the permission of their members, taking away their collective bargaining rights. But none of that was in the television ads fought on this. This was all fought on Medicare, over Medicare cuts, in a state election of all things, and on Paul Ryan's budget. In other words, they were taking federal issues and stuffing them into state-level contests. So the campaign was bait and switch. The campaign clearly shifted to Washington issues because I think the unions took some focus groups and polls and they decided, you know, these, these reforms are not as unpopular as we thought. In fact, school districts are increasing class sizes. They're hiring more teachers because they have more flexibility in their labor contracts. Property taxes are, are, are not going up uh, because the schools are saving money. Milwaukee's budget uh, is now $25 million closer to balance because of the health care reforms in this bill. So on the ground, I think the reforms are working, and that was reflected in the fact the unions did not make Walker's actual reforms their major issue in the key recalls. John, that's a, that's, a, that's a decision that is a mistake, generally. You campaign on issues because you're going to have to govern on those issues. So if you don't tell the people what you're for, you don't have the endorsement. The you're not enfranchised to make changes. Well, I think you're mischaracterizing what these recall elections are all about. This is the wrecking crew. They are very upset that Walker challenged public union, employee union power in the state, and they decided to try to stop him and teach him a lesson and intimidate Republicans in other states from even trying such reforms. That's what this election is all about. It's not about governing. It's about stopping those who would govern in a certain direction. And using Metascare is a way of refuting the governor of, of Wisconsin? That seems a stretch. Is the union unhappy with the fact that they had to change the topic? Does that, does that make them think that their issues have been lost? Uh, not publicly. Uh, they're simply saying, we will punish those who go against us. Oh, well, that's and, thug tactics. And, the, and th this is all about payback. Right. Now, even if they win control of the state Senate, with, all of these elections are in the state Senate, even if they were to regain control of the state Senate, that doesn't stop any of Walker's proposals because they're already law, right. and Republicans still have the governorship and the assembly. But it is symbolic, it is important, and it shows a, it's a demonstration of who has more political muscle, the unions or the Tea Party, because both sides have spent millions and millions of dollars in these few small, obscure state Senate seats in the wilds of Wisconsin. 
And another way of looking at this, John, is that this is the Republican Party trying to perform well on a on a on a field uh, controlled by the opposition, right? Wisconsin, you'd have to say, has a dominantly Wisconsin voting a voting base these last years. Yes, the Tea Party election, we can point to some sex successes there, but still, this is not what you'd call a battleground state for 2012. The 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 fight's going to be waged elsewhere. Well, it, it look, it's certain. You're right. It's been Democratic. It has not voted Republican for president since 1984, Ronald Reagan's last election. However, the, the, there is concern the state is shifting. That's why Democrats are fighting this. They want to tamp down any, this Tea Party rebellion, and that's why they're having this uh, knockdown, dragout fight there. The, the most interesting thing, though, is that the demonstration, have, do unions still have the clout to right, punish those right, right. who dare to go against them, challenge public employee unions and all of their privileges, or is the Tea Party now become a counterforce that can block and tackle the unions? And the uh, budget negotiations, the debt negotiations these last weeks, has that in some way influenced this election? Because it's fairly clear with that debt downgrade, uh, the credit r downgrade on Friday, that the whole nation is aware that our finances are wobbly and continuing to fund public unions regardless of the income of the state is not any longer considered good policy. I think the unions and the left were ahead, much further ahead, perhaps a week or so ago. But some of the turbulence and the uncertainty in Washington, the collapse in the market on Monday, may have caused people, uh, conservatives, to increase their intensity factor. Right, right. So I think that if, if the Republicans do turn out to have saved most of their recall seats, I think it may be in part that conservatives woke up and realized, you know, we have a dog in this fight, too. And if the unions win, uh, that will mean much less chance of reform, both at the state and the federal level. You're a keen eye for voter fraud, for tampering with the voters. Is there any indication of that, John, in a local election like this? Well, actually, it turns out that the Republican legislature uh, early this year passed a series of reforms. Uh, they modified the same-day registration system, which allowed people to vote. Uh, and register at the same day on election, uh, on election time. They extended the amount of time you have to technically live in the state to, in order to vote from one week to 30 days. They made a, a series of procedural reforms which are very commonsensical, and apparently they're working. There are almost no complaints of substance uh, on either Good. side and so far this, on this election. And uh, right now the indication from MSNBC, which is covering this as if it was, say, the burning London, is that the Republicans have retained two seats. Uh, there are four to, uh, to, uh, to answer for. Is that correct? Uh, Republicans have retained two seats. There are four left. But the counting is uh, remarkably slow. In, mm. there, in several of these races, less than... Um, well, it appears that the Republicans have re are ahead now in a total of four of the six seats. Right. Democrats have a lead in two of the six, but there's enough votes out that it could go either way. And uh, the Democrats need to win three minimum in order to uh, in order to win symbolically. Is that how it's understood? Well, they have to win three minimum in order to get bragging rights and to take control of the state Senate. In addition, uh, even if they win the three seats, there's two Democratic seats that are up for recall. Because remember, the Democratic senators fled the state, and, and the Republicans claimed that was in der a derogation of their duty. So. The state Senate could even swing back next week if the Republicans lose it tonight. But the real bragging rights, the real focus of attention as to whether Governor Walker's reforms mustered enough popular support to be ratified will be tonight. And right now, it's a little too close to call, but I would say the Democrats are likely to fall short of taking control of the Wisconsin State Senate. John Fund of the American Spectator reminding everyone that soon, as soon as these votes are counted tonight, Wisconsin can get back to the serious work of worrying about the Green Bay Packers and what their season looks like. That's what's really my understanding of Wisconsin is. Packers first, everything else. Tonight, Packers stepping aside. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.